The Salem UFO. Captured on the morning of July 16th, 1952, this creepy photo appears to show four unidentified flying objects hovering across the skies of Salem, Massachusetts. Isn't Salem known for witches, not UFOs? We'll keep going. We know that the photographer's name was Shell Alpert, that it was taken at Salem's Coast Guard Air Station, and that the objects were spotted above the Winter Island and Cat Cove areas, but little else is known about this bizarre image. Some have claimed that the lights are simply reflections in the window through which it was taken. Others point to incidents throughout the 1950s in which supposedly similar crafts were seen, but the truth will likely remain a mystery forever. Maybe not forever. We've been seeing a lot of UFOs uh, lately. You know, the the government's trying to play it off as like advanced Russian or Chinese technology, but we see those things going at like thousands and thousands of miles per hour, just phew, zinging through the sky. And everyone who sees, like pilots who see it, are like, oh my god, what the hell was that? I just wish somebody could get like an HD video of one, you know? We're getting all these like radar ones and like really, you know, crappy pixelated ones. Somebody's gotta get their freaking GoPro on these things, you know? <laughs> GoPro 2021. Let's see it happen. The real life Shining Hotel. Long before his stay at the Stanley Hotel in Estes Park, Colorado prompted author Stephen King to write The Shining, this Rocky Mountain Lodge was leaving its visitors terrified. Seen here under construction in the early 1900s, the hotel was home to an unexplained explosion in 1911 that left a chambermaid maimed. She returned to work, but after her death years later, guests reported seeing her ghost stalk the halls, especially the scene of the incident in room 217. This was the exact room where King spent his fateful and terrifying night at the Stanley in October 1974. Yeah. I mean, a lot of scary stuff happens to inspire other scary stuff, don't you know? It's just like the, to, like, like all, all sorts of old hotels, again, like unsafe working conditions that just existed back then because, but like all sorts of old hotels back then were in super remote areas where just all sorts of insane could happen, right? And like nobody would be there to do anything about it. Like, ah, oh, it burned down, but you know, the nearest fire crew was like 200 kilometers away. Oh yeah, no, this this crazy guy was there, but you know, back then crazy was seen differently, I guess. You know, <laughs> people weren't helped, they were just left alone to come up with more plots to kill more people, I don't know. The Rothschild Surrealist Ball. The elaborate masks, robes, and decorations on display at the 1972 Rothschild Surrealist Ball are unsettling enough on their own even before you consider the people behind it. Wild conspiracy theories have swirled around the Rothschilds for centuries, with believers claiming that this German banking family does everything from control the world's wealth to instigate wars for their own gain. Whether or not any such rumors are true, Baroness... Oh, how am I, gonna, how am I supposed to read that? <laughs> Because all, 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 all the characters have been turned into... <laughs> Sounds like uh, Eyes Wide Shut to me, right? This is Kubrickian. Maybe he was uh, inspired by that. Yeah, I mean, like, things that the, the Mega Ridge do, like, they, there's no way that they have, like, the same tastes, wants, and needs as people who are not. You know, behind some of the most powerful and well-moneyed organizations in the world. There's no way that their brains work even close to the same as ours. Like if you gained that money all of a sudden now, you would be nowhere near the same level of insane as some like next level old money lunatic. Just, th there's no comparing it. You could walk into the same place and it'd be like speaking different languages, even if you were on the same page entirely. Hello everybody and welcome back to Top 10 Central Dark, your place for all things horror. I'm your host Keegan Hughes and today we're taking a look at the top 10 scary pictures from history. History is scary and so is yelling. So they just go hand in hand, history and yelling, just like that. Let's see what other terrifying historical images we have to look at today. The Hilo Tsunami of 1946. On April 1st, 1946, an 8.6 magnitude earthquake off the coast of the Aleutian Islands in Alaska sent shockwaves throughout the Pacific. An ocean-wide tsunami quickly began to form, causing waves to reach as high as 13 stories. Soon the tsunami struck Hilo, Hawaii, leaving more than 170 people dead in what remains one of the worst disasters in Hawaiian history. The chilling image captures the final moments of the unknown person at the bottom left. I did not see that person, let's return to this image. Oh my goodness, yeah, they're, that's, they're like right there. That is seriously a final moment right there. That's just like, what do you do at that point? You see this crashing towards you and you just, I guess you just gotta find peace, right? They don't look like they're panicking too much. They're just looking right into it. They're going, yep, 
Tsunami's here. I am no longer here. <laughs> Radium Girls. Hundreds of young girls and women who worked in American watch factories during the 1920s were exposed to so much radium that they came home glowing in the dark. Now wouldn't that be fun? The prolonged exposure to radium used in the luminous paint that coated the watch faces caused their vertebrae to collapse, their jaws to swell up and fall off, and their lives to end slowly in agony while battling cancer. That's less fun. It would be like a like like a like a like a fun novelty to show up home glowing for a little while, but uh, yeah, the rest of that not so great. A hundred years from now, what are we gonna look back upon and be like, hmm, we probably should have been more safe while doing that. <laughs> what what substances are we, are, we, are we using? What factories are people working in? What conditions are folks living in that we're gonna be like, yeah, that was pretty, that was pretty crazy back then. I can't believe we were just using radium like that. What's it gonna be? Well, I, I, I hope it's not something that I use all the time. The Pioneer's Defense. This creepy historical image was captured in 1937 by Russian photographer Viktor Bula. While certainly an ominous sight, the men and women depicted here were merely members of the Young Pioneers, the Soviet youth group that was akin to the Boy Scouts. They're seen here donning gas masks during a military preparation drill in the Leningrad area, uncertain of what tomorrow might bring in the years before World War II, while their home country was seeing waves of death and terror under dictator Joseph Stalin. Wow, so I was right, they were gas masks. Old school gas masks are just absolutely terrifying, don't you think? Like even the new ones are pretty bad, but like those ones, they just like, it looks like something directly out of a creepypasta. I'm sure people went and they found these pictures and like that's what influenced them to make like, you know, the creepypasta with all the men and like all the videos and things, and things people changing and shifting. But it's just like, it is just so inhuman. It's like far, like it's in, in the deepest depths of the uncanny valley where it's like, you know it's not human, but it's on a human. So it's like their face is hidden and it, it's like a, a portent of doom because you know, gas masks should really only be used in places where you, you can't breathe. I, there's, just, there's, there's a lot going on. John Lennon and his killer. On December 8th, 1980, John Lennon signs an autograph on his way out of his New York apartment building for a fan named Mark David Chapman, who would murder the iconic musician on this very spot when he returned home just a few hours later. As Lennon made his way back into the building at about 10.50 p.m., Chapman stepped out of the shadows and four into his back. Lennon was pronounced dead at Roosevelt Hospital some 25 minutes later. Yeah, they'll do that to you. Speaking of people who shouldn't be left alone, Mark David Chapman, everybody. Hey, God, fanaticism is crazy, eh? Like people that like become obsessed with stars and like d decide that it's like their responsi responsibility to do that, it's their destiny to do that, they must do it because it's bonkers. And what, 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 was, he, what was he inspired by again? Was it Catcher in the Rye? I read that in high school, I didn't go and shoot anybody. Different, different strokes for different folks. The Stanford Prison Experiment. See, I know about this one. This is a classic, was it Zimbardo? Yeah, Philip Zimbardo, there we go. The Stanford Prison Experiment commenced on August 14, 1971 after university psychology professor Philip Zimbardo divided student volunteers into two groups comprised of 11 guards and 10 prisoners in order to see how they would behave on their own inside a fabricated prison. The goal was to assess how quickly and intensely even educated and intelligent people can turn cruel and sadistic under the right conditions, and find out once and for all whether humans are inherently good or evil. In just six days before the experiment had to be called off, the guards had repeatedly abused and humiliated the humiliated. In just six days before the experiment had to be called off, the guards had repeatedly abused and humiliated the prisoners by spraying them with fire extinguishers and forcing them to clean toilet bowls with their bare hands. The study and the creepiest photos up behind provide a chilling look at what humans are capable of. Yeah, that's uh, that 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 fell uh, fell down in some deep dark depths real quick, now didn't it? Although, although I think. Like the actual like scientific validity of this experiment, like has been called into question a lot, <laughs> just because he was just like, like like literally like no instructions other than just like your guards, your prisoners, like good luck, like you're in there, you lock them up, do whatever, and like I feel like the cruelty was almost implied. It's hard to replicate a uh, an experiment like this and use it as proof that humans are inherently evil. I think maybe it's like under certain structures, like people will abuse power, but 
you know what, that might be going too far for today. Back Weathers, the frozen man of Mount Everest. In May 1996, mountain climber Beck Weathers and his team attempted to complete their ascent of Mount Everest. Although they only had a small stretch to go, Weathers came down with a bad case of snow blindness. After getting stuck in a harrowing blizzard with a wind chill of 100 degrees below zero, he fell into a hypothermic coma. Frostbite set in on his nose and hands, both of which were later amputated. Miraculously, he managed to survive, walk back to camp, and be airlifted for treatment. Let me see him again? Let me, let me, let me look at that picture one more time. Holy smokes, yeah, that is just, that's, that's, a, that's a rough way to be, don't you think? That is just, oh my goodness. I mean, if you're a mountain climber, I think you assume those risks, but just to, to see that happen to the human body, that is chilling to say the least. And that is all the time we have for today, folks. Hopefully these historical images didn't freak you out too much. Too much. A little bit is fine, but uh, you know, history, it's in the past. Scarier things are coming in the future, don't you worry. I don't know if that's comforting. Make sure you stick around for some bloopers, and I'll see you next time. Um, yeah. Yeah, we'll start at one. Be weird down, I'll go back to the peg, look at it, and then give her Oh. Ugh. Uh, whatever that thing is, it was terribly yucky. Let's take a look at this picture. Ooh, I like got a little voice crack there, eh? Oh my god, is everyone wearing gas masks? <laughs> Alright, should I do an intro? If you do? Oh, okay. That's a great joke. Good job, Keegan. <laughs> <laughs> Long before his stay at the Stanley Hotel in Estes Park, Colorado, prompted uh, what? Oh, okay, I got you. Wait, 1911 that left a chambermaid maimed. A chamber maimed, am I right? <laughs> Whoa. After getting stuck in a harrowing blizzard with a windshield of one windshield. On April 1st, 1946, an 8.6 magnitude. On April 1st, 1946, an 8.6 magnitude earthquake off the host. Oh, what am I saying here? Oof. Whether or not any such rumors are true, Baroness. Oh, how am I gonna? How am I supposed to read that? Because <laughs> all, all all the characters have been turned into <laughs> funky characters.